Um, okay, I think we've just about got everybody in from the waiting room. So here is what's going to be happening today. Uh, I'm going to be introducing you to some of the work of Ruthie Alon and her uh, umbrella of work called Movement Intelligence, but specifically Bones for Life, specifically Bones for Life. And um, in that process of introducing you to the Bones for Life work, uh, I will be teaching you something in standing as well as something in uh, sitting and then something lying down on your back on a firm surface. And that's what I indicated you would need a towel for. Actually, you'll need it also for, uh, may need it for the sitting thing. I'm not sure. We'll see. Depends. Each person is so different. So it's good to have you here. I would also like to get an idea of how many of you have ever done any Bones for Life or Feldenkrais. So if you're new to Bones for Life or Feldenkrais, could you put just new in the comments? I just want to get a sense of people who are completely new to the work. So I know what I need to cover. Good. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So that's good. Okay. So I, I got a good idea that I need to take some time with you. Yeah. And uh, so for uh, people who are, um, let me just say that I think a couple of you raised your hands to try to tell me you were new, but that actually means you want to ask a question. So if you don't really want to ask a question, if you could take your hand down, that would be great. If you do want to ask it, I'll take all the questions probably at the end. Um, and that'll just allow me to, uh, allow me to make good use of our time together. So we'll probably do about an hour and 15 minutes of movement together. And then uh, we will have, I will stick around for question and answers for as, and comments as many people as need to have to ask. I'll try to, I'll try to stay for the duration. We'll see how I do. Um, so Ruthie Alon, I'm going to say just a little bit about Ruthie Alon and her work and Bones for Life. So as you can see, Katrina is trying to make sure you understand the camera on means that we will have access to your recording later and you may end up on video. And um, if there are two or three people here that are experienced in Bones for Life that would be okay with me highlighting them, spotlighting them for people throughout, if you could say, okay, to spotlight in the comments so I can grab you for that. That would be great. Um, so I can just make sure I, I don't grab people who um, aren't comfortable with what we're doing. Okay, great. It's a couple of you I see so far. So anybody else that feels okay with that? Beautiful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. So let me just say briefly, Ruthie Alon is one of the pioneers in, in somatic education. She studied with Moshe Feldenkrais started in her early in her life and then went on to actually, uh, you know, become a trainer with him and was our one of our senior trainers. We loved her work. She just died in December, uh, was a, a big moment for me anyway, and many of us in our, our relationship to such an important influence in our life. And then um, Ruthie in her always had her own style and her own style had a very poetic nature as well as a lot of use of props. She was somebody who really liked using props, which is an unusual thing actually in the Feldenkrais work. We don't use props that much in our teaching of, uh, of movement classes. We do use props in private sessions, but not so much in teaching of our movement classes. So Ruthie was really incredible with these movement props. And, um, always creating your own stuff. Very interesting personality, really. Just a, a wonderful, wonderful person. So she, about age 60, came up with her own work called Bones for Life. This was the first thing in her movement intelligence umbrella. And then she's gone on to develop many others since then. And she was very interested in what she could do to help people with bone health, uh, joint health. And and implied in this name, Bones for Life, is a double entendre, you know, bones for the extent of your life, but also like what are the fundamentals we need for living life? So there was this beautiful uh, embeddedness of teaching, just like in the Feldenkrais method, for all of your life, for everything that you might need 
for your life um, in terms of, uh, well, these qualities of creativity, of curiosity, of awareness, of sensation, kinesthetic intelligence. These are things that we really do need, but are seldom stressed. So she she has a series of 90 movement processes. We're going to cover versions of three of them or so today. And you will be doing some standing for the standing. I highly recommend that you have your shoes off unless you are have somebody who has an injury to your feet and you need your shoes on, or you have a tendency towards plantar fasciitis. You probably will want to keep your shoes on at least for the beginning of it. And then, uh, yes, I'm, I'm Cynthia Allen. So if you missed that at the beginning, I'm Cynthia Allen. And I'm your host today, and I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, I'm also the creator of the Feldenkrais Awareness Summit, so that's why you've got this opportunity with me today. Um, so I could have shared something from Feldenkrais, but you're going to get a lot of Feldenkrais, right, <laughs> during the Feldenkrais Awareness Summit. So I, I like sharing as the pre-summit thing. I did this last year. It was very popular, something from Bones for Life, which is very based in the Feldenkrais Principles but it is not the same as the Feldenkrais method. It has some differences to it. So that's how we're gonna do it today. That's how we're gonna go. So what we're gonna start off with is standing. Again, you wanna take your shoes off unless you are, uh, have a foot injury or you have a tendency towards plantar fasciitis. I'm just gonna back myself up here a little bit so we can see each other. And let's see here, if I keep going back, I keep going back, okay. So in, in um, our work, we have a couple of things that are kind of what we call bread and butter items. And one of them is, is bouncing on heels. So this will be a repeat for some of you. And if you will just start though, by standing, just start by standing and feeling, feeling the quality of how you stand and whatever that might mean to you, whatever that means to you. Now, if you stay looking at the camera when I'm guiding you in these sensory pieces, you will not really get to feel yourself in the same way. You'll be spending a lot of your time trying to get your eyes to go forward and focus on the image. So we want the eyes to be really restful when you come to listen to your own, own self, your own body, your own sensation. So you might even close your eyes or you could turn yourself away from the camera, your whole body away from the camera, and then just look once in a while if you feel like you need some guidance. So you might be able to notice something about how tall you feel you might be able to notice something about where do you look out into the room? Do you look down or straight out or up? You may be able to notice something about the weight in your feet. Now, an easy thing for many people is to notice, do I lean heavier on the left foot or do I lean heavier on the right foot? You know, is there one foot that seems like a lot more planted into the ground? So you could take a moment to notice that. Maybe if you were standing in something soft like clay or um, clay or uh, just mud, you would feel like one foot would sink a lot more and leave a much deeper impression than the other foot. And then come up to start to notice something about the curves of your body. So you might feel like, hey, my sacrum, my tailbone, that big triangular bone at the back of your pelvis, you know, does it feel like it points kind of down or does it feel like it points back, sort of like sticking your tail out or does it feel like it's tucked under a little bit? And then you could come to the curve of your low back, the curve of your low back, and you can even put a hand there and just feel like, what is the curve of that back like right now? What's the curve of the back like right now? Does it feel like a deep, a deep in curve? Like the, the low back sits really forward of the sacrum, so really forward of the pelvis. Does it feel like it rounds and it gets long? 
So we often refer to this as an incurve, meaning it curves deeper in towards the belly button, the front of the body, or an out curve. It curves more away from the belly button or the front of the body. And then you could feel across the back of your shoulders because we're gonna be doing things throughout this session that's gonna allow you that to change throughout your whole body. And then how about the shape of your neck? And if you would like, you can put a hand there and feel the shape of your neck. So again, does the neck have a deep in curve or more of an out curve, or does it feel flat? Some people say their neck feels quite straight. Okay, now, so we have a little sense of how you feel starting into this session. And this is an important aspect that we do over and over in both the Feldenkrais work and in Bones for Life, that you stop and you take some stock of where you are in some few pieces of something that you could compare to as we go along. We're going to also just notice maybe the angle of the knees. Do the knees feel locked back? Do they feel a little bit soft? Okay, and now we're gonna play with the rest of the movement. To start off with, we're just gonna put our, our right hand over our heart. <clears throat> and we're gonna start a little light tap as if this was our heartbeat together around the world. So we just begin to let the idea, maybe it will feel pleasant to you, maybe it will feel connected to you that we have a little pum pum, double, hap, double heartbeat, a little rub dub together. Now we're gonna put a vocalization with that and the vocalization is pum pum, 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 pum pum. Are you saying it with me? It's very important to say it. Pum pum, pum pum, pum pum because that saying of it will vibrate your chest and it will also, which vibrates uh, nerves and glands and maybe bone. And it will also help to monitor your breathing and the um, effort that you put into it, right? This is very light, quick, easy. Pum, 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 pum. Now that our hearts are starting to beat together and we can feel our connection or not, and then we have the vocalization of pum pum, we're actually gonna to revert to a double tap of our heels. So for every pum pum, we will double tap our heels. Now, if you have trouble with plantar fasciitis, I'm gonna suggest, or some other heel injury, that you do the heel tapping in your imagination. But both heels will rise and fall. For every pum pum, a heel is tapping. You can't lift them very high, right? It's not about lifting high. It's about going very gently. And we're gonna go kind of light and quick. So let's do that together. Pum, 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 pum. And then just stop and wait. And what are we waiting for? Well, we're waiting for our body to feel, what do I wanna do about that vibratory movement that was just sent in? And sometimes something just starts to reorganize, maybe at a very deep level, maybe it's even at a cellular level, but, but we definitely can tell for sure that, oh, maybe something changed in the knees. Hmm, maybe my feet feel differently on the ground. Huh. Maybe something's starting to happen in my, my posture, some kind of ease might be developing. Now we are sending pressure through this axial skeleton. This is something that's very different from the Feldenkrais work, this active pre, uh, ongoing channeling of pressure through the axial skeleton is, is an, a piece that Ruthie felt was missing from the Feldenkrais work. But we wanna do that in such a way that we don't have an excessive in curve in either of these two places, the low back or the cervical spine, the neck. Well, why? Well, the reason is that if you have an excessive in curve, that means that as pressure travels through the joint, it's not gonna really make it to the next level. It's gonna tend to create a shear force. So instead of it coming up and going up and then coming up and going up, it kind of comes up and it sort of shears. 
And that creates wear and tear. It creates inflammation. Eventually it could create something like osteoarthritis, or if it got really bad way down the, the line, although certainly not, not unrecoverable, let me say that, but people think of it as bad, it's spinal stenosis. So those, or it could be knee osteoarthritis, right? Because you don't have a good transmission through the knee. So it can be also there, but we're going to play with two of these curves. And so we want to, we want to see how could we affect this, this curve without doing an active muscular tuck. That is not what we're interested in. We are not interested in an active muscular pelvic tuck because you can't walk around in the world like that all the time without causing yourself problems. So Ruthie has come up with a few different ways to do it. And we're just going to do one today. So if you put your, your uh, fingers right above your pubic bone in the fleshy area, and then your, your thumbs around your belly button. And if you have a bit of flesh, like I have, you can actually treat it like a handle and you can actually pick up the flesh of the belly. Now, if you don't have um, a fleshy belly, you can just still nudge the fingers up in that direction. You won't feel like you're really grabbing, uh, like as in uh, the thumbs and the fingers pinching together, but you could just snug it up a little bit by taking those fingers above the pubic bone and pulling it up. Now you want to do that a few times just to feel, does something change in my low back? Does something change in my low back? And maybe something also changes in the weight on your feet. Maybe something also changes on your heels. Now stay there with it held up a little bit using your hands to do that as opposed to your belly muscles. And we're going to bounce on heels again. So pum, 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 pum. Last one. Good. And then just softly let the hands rest. And again, wait for your body to just sort of adjust a little bit to that, that new information. For some of you, if you have a low back problem, you just felt some relief. You just went, oh my gosh, that felt so much better having that go through. Or maybe you even had a little knee pain and doing something here turned around and allowed your knees to let the transmission of force go through. And we can also put a hand behind the neck and align that curve. So we'll bring a hand that behind the neck. You're going to just sort of uh, spread the fingers out a little bit. So you can sort of feel the, the quality of the entire curve. And then you're going to put the other hand on your chest. Now the hand on the chest is going to scoop back and up. And as it scoops the, the breastbone with very malleable breastbone back and up, you may feel that the space between the fingers gets wider, gets wider, they get further apart. So the hand isn't sliding. It's kind of, I pretend it's glued. And then as I breathe out, I also let it carry the shape of the breastbone back in an arc up and back in an arc to the base of the skull. The next time that you do that, stay there, establish a normal breath. So you have a little bit of extra space that a little different alignment in the neck. And now we'll bounce on heels again. Pum, 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 pum. Last one. And you can just softly bring your hand out and bring your other hand down. Now, nothing that we do in here should cause you any kind of discomfort or pain. If it does, you wanna do it in your imagination. You wanna do less of it. You wanna skip that part. You could think about a way to do it creatively that would work for you. There's a lot of options, but we don't work through pain. We work through ease. We work through ease. Maybe you're somebody who's been watching and you're not able to stand. You could definitely work with this alignment and, and the 
uh, chest, neck, and the bouncing on heels from your chair. So you can start where you need to start. Let's put those two together because it turns out that if you just change here, a lot of times the neck arches more. And if you just elongate the neck, a lot of times the low back arches more. But if we link them both of them at the same time, sometimes the change starts to happen in this very reluctant area to change called the thoracic, these ribs and vertebra between the shoulder blades and a little below. So we're gonna put one hand now in the belly, one hand behind the neck. Oh, sorry, one hand on the chest. Let's do that. One hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. We're gonna take both of them at the same time. Both of them at the same time. Stay and we'll bounce on heels one more time. Pum, 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 pum. Pum, 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 pum. Last one. Good. Let it go. And stand for a moment. And I feel something, something softening in my shoulders, something softening in my feet. Hmm. I think my breath is starting to get a little bit easier. So what do you feel for yourself? It could be nothing. It could be something completely different. It could be an emotional response. It doesn't have to be a physical response. Okay, and then just walk around for a moment in your space. Feel yourself in walking. Feel your arms, your shoulders. Okay, and then when you're ready to come back, I would love to hear uh, from a few people their comments about what they experienced. If you could just pop those in the chat. So your experience of it, we'll stick with chat for the moment. Like, what did you notice as a result of that? Or what are you curious about as a result of that? Could also be a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing. So Sue says that she felt a numb pelvis was fixed as soon as she lifted the stomach. Excellent. Jennifer felt good. Noticed my breath lengthening. Mm -hmm. uh, baby Kramer. I like that. Felt, felt, um, let's see, I lost her already. Let me try to get a screen size here that I can see maybe. Uh, Felt a cooling effect on the cervical spine. Gita, lower back releases. Um, uh, Lucy, you, no, you cannot. So I'm sorry it aggravated your low back, but I believe that will shift if we get the quality of how you lengthen your low back. But no, I would not bounce on a physio ball instead of the heels. So I think there's other options long-term, but um, I probably can't address those here at the moment. But the quality of how we begin to lengthen your low back, I believe will change that for you. Um, Judy, low back softened and released. Anne, breath is freer. Claire, softening of neck and head. Sheila, more balance on feet. More elongated. Uh, Gil, breathing easy, long neck. Good. Sue, calming his system. Headache is gone. Debbie, I feel decompressed, light and airy. Wow, listen to this. This is fantastic. And there goes on and on and on. Okay, I'm just trying to, yes, I'm trying to, gonna, uh, gonna scroll down. Yeah, you know, you're gonna find it difficult to see me. There's not that without all kinds of different uh, camera angles and stuff that's gonna be challenging. But I'm gonna encourage you that it's really not as much about visually seeing me, even though that is the culture that we live in. It's more about how you hear the instructions and interpret them for yourself and then playing around with it. You don't, you go, well, maybe that isn't quite what she meant. That's a great thing. Maybe that isn't quite what she meant. That's fabulous. And then you try something slightly different or you, you try to listen again for the next variation. Yeah, Eleanor said she didn't understand the hand on the chest going in. That is a tricky one, isn't it? Because people think of their chest as hard, hard. 
the rib cage. It's hard. It's not. It's only hard if you think of it as hard. It's only hard if your brain thinks of it as hard. It's actually very malleable. So I try to think of it like as warm wax or uh, uh, honey, something that I feel like I can get a different sense than some kind of big gnarly bone structure that a lot of us think of it as. So that as you breathe out already, if you just put your hand on your chest and you feel your breath in and out and in and out, many of you will feel like, oh, when I breathe out, something happens here and it loses some of its shape. It loses some of its volume. And when you breathe in, it expands. Well, we're going to take advantage of that so that when we're breathing out and there's not a lot of air in the chest cavity, we breathe out and then we press it. Now, if you press straight back, it would just go back and it would just cause a bigger curve. So that's not the way we're pressing. We're pressing in an angle up towards the base of the skull, towards the base of the skull. Okay. So in that that pressing back in that direction, it has a little more chance at elongation. There's lots and lots of different ways that we do that. Oh, great. Some people noticed some changing in their knees. Good. Let's see if there's anything else. I want to be sure I copied on it, say something on. Do try to send your notes publicly. I can't really um, respond to private notes in a session like this. It's difficult. Um, yeah, somebody said they started to feel emotional, but then it passed. You know, and that's that's also can come up with any kind of movement that we have a moment where what what is emotional it might mean angry, it might mean laughter, it might mean sad, uh, it might be agitated, anxious. And so we're looking not we're looking to see if that passes through and goes on. If it doesn't feel like it passes through quickly, then you probably need to take a break. Mm -hmm. and... Okay, good. So I think that was the beginning. Yeah, it's a scooping motion. Thank you, um, Deborah. She says she thinks of it as a scooping motion of the chest. I it's a great description of it. And lots of really good responses. Okay. And, and then some that were not so good. And the, that's all part of the discovery process, all part of starting to learn about yourself. And so we try to pace these things slow enough, easy enough that you will have a chance to learn more and more about your body. So in this work, we're not looking for uh, X that fixes Y. We're looking for X that stimulates your own nervous system, your own intelligence to begin to reorganize and give you more options for the future. Okay. This is not a, Hey, I have this problem. Therefore I'm going to do this and it's going to fix it. That is not what somatic education is about. Somatic education is about learning, learning. So Moshe Feldenkrais said it was learning to learn. And it's an amazing lack of adult, adults of us know how to learn because we've lost our curiosity. We've lost our self-drive. I don't know why that is. We could get into a whole big philosophical discussions about that, but we don't really approach things throughout our life with that kind of curiosity that we had as children. So therefore it becomes very habitual and there's not a lot of options for how we can move through our lives. So we're about increasing those options so that you can, you know, move better, feel better. Uh, so I want to, I want to go ahead and move on to uh, kind of our second movement. And this is one we did last year in this warm up group, but it was so popular. I think we'll do it again. And then we're going to do something that um, I haven't, I don't think I've ever chat publicly in a group like this. So you're going to want to be able to put your head on your desk or a, a chair. You could lie down on the floor and do this. If you're somebody who uh, is super comfortable on the floor, you're going to be on your belly for it. 
but uh, for most of you, you are already sitting at some kind of a desk. So I am going to demonstrate this for you. And then we'll back up and I'll, I'll get you started with a little bit of a, um, a scan again. So you're going to be putting one arm on top of the other arm. Now, you could put hand on hand, but I actually don't think most of you are going to like it because the fingers and the hands are bony. So really, we're wanting arm on top of arm, okay, as opposed to hand on top of hand. If, and you're going to feel for some of you, oh, that's a little difficult, and you might need to start to retract the arms back a little bit. But then you'll want to take your glasses off if you have glasses, arm on top of arm, and then you're going to lie your forehead on the back of your arms. Now, when you do that, like I could feel, oh, that now my chair is too close. It doesn't feel good for me. So I'm going to back my chair up a little bit. I want to have a little bit of a roundedness in my spine. I don't want to be like completely elongated. So I wouldn't be like way back here and do it. That's too, too big. I'm looking for some kind of little sweet spot in between. Okay, now I won't be demonstrating beyond that, but I'm going to try to take a little look here at some of you to see how you're doing in your setup, just to get an idea. If you're on the floor and you want to bring up one knee to the outside for your um, comfort, you can do that. For those of you at the desk, just looking through to see how you're doing, coming up with your strategies. Okay, it's looking good. Hey, Ellen Beerhorst. <laughs> it's fun to see. And I'm going to say Clotilda because I can. I finally got it. I finally got your name right after a year, Clotilda. <laughs> hey, Nikki Orleman. It's good to see you. Okay, you all are looking good. Great. Okay. So <clears throat> as you are lying here, uh, with your head on the back of your hands, just feel your breath, just feel your breath and begin to feel where does the forehead rest on the back of the arms? Where is that spot on the forehead that is touching? Where's the spot on the forehead that is touching? And then also notice your breath in this position and the shape of your spine. Lindsay, can you turn your camera down just a little bit for me? Thank you. And Robin, could you do the same thing? Turn your camera down just a hair. Thank you. So as you feel your head resting on the back of your arms there and you feel that spot that currently touches, right? Currently touches a place on your arm. Begin to slide your head a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left as if that same exact spot on the forehead was going to touch a new place on your arm. The same exact spot on your forehead was going to touch a new place on your arm. We sometimes call this spreading butter or drawing a charcoal line. If you imagined that you had a butter pat on your he head or you had a piece of charcoal there and you wanted to lay that charcoal down on your arm a little bit. Now you go a little left and right. And for some of you, you're like, I can't go anywhere with hard, with before I start turning my head. And we remember, we don't wanna cause any kind of discomfort, no discomfort. So can you go very gently, very slowly, so that it's not anything that you're trying to force. Not anything that you're trying to force. Good. Now, if you would pause with that for a moment and just come back up for a moment and sit tall, whatever that means to you. Sit tall. And 
I've got a couple people here up for us that are being our kind of demos for our recording and otherwise if you need a little bit of an idea of who of what's going on you can watch and then come back to it yourself then go ahead and put one arm on top of the other maybe put the other arm on top maybe put the other arm on top and that might feel really foreign and if you say ah, i don't like it i need to go back to the other one you can but if it's okay with you then keep it on top. And then go ahead again, just slide that a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. And this is actually the movement we're going to be looking to improve. This is actually the movement we're going to be looking to improve. Adelaide, you can let your legs rest on the ground if you want. Yeah. Okay, now pause for a moment and stay with your head there as long as that's okay for you. And we're going to just do a little different movement. And this movement, we're going to feel the, in your mind's eye, you feel sort of the front of the right shoulder. And as you feel the front of the right shoulder, just sort of shrug the right shoulder a little bit towards the jaw or the side of the face. So it's sort of like doing a funky little shoulder shrug in this position. And then you take it back to where it was and you shrug and you take it back to where it was and you shrug. Yeah, something simple. Simple in a weird position. Now go ahead and let that go and let's try the left. You shrug the left shoulder towards the side of the face and back and shrug it back, shrug it back. Now, what if you alternate? You shrug one and you take it back to where it was and then you shrug the other and then you take it back to where it was and you begin to feel maybe some different kind of interplay between not only the two shoulders and the two upper arm bones, but also in the mid back, in the mid back. Maybe something's happening in those ribs and in the shoulder blades. Maybe something's happening in the ribs and in the shoulder blades. Good. And let that go for a moment. Pause. Sit yourself back and up in a comfortable way. Just feel your breath. And then when you're ready, come back, maybe cross your arms over the other way. This might be your original way that you liked more than. Put your forehead on the back of the arms. Or if you need to have hands, you can do hands. If you have hands, you might need a towel. You might feel like you need a towel because it's going to bony. Most hands are very bony. <clears throat> okay. Now let's do that little bit of swiping a little left and right. And just notice if that got a little easier to spread some butter. Like something about what could happen in the shoulder blades and in the uh, mid spine and maybe even in the breastbone is clearer. So you're not rolling the head. You keep that orientation almost like you had your head on a spit, which is a horrible image, isn't it? But if you had uh, something going through the ears and you couldn't roll the head, what would that be like as a movement? Okay, good. Now pause in the middle there. And we'll do a different version. And this version is going to be to roll the head. So feel the back of the head rolling towards the right elbow. And then the back of the head rolling towards the left elbow. And we really want you to tune in to the quality of how the head rolls towards the elbow behind. How the, how the head rolls towards the elbow behind. Yeah, that's it.
Good. Now, pause in the middle. And um, let's see if we could we could come back to just brushing the brushing the um, butter left and right. And if you would feel just a little bit like, yeah, even more, it's somehow a little easier. Okay, now pause in the middle. Roll the back of your head towards your right elbow. And then could you sweep along that temple? Maybe the butter's on your temple now. Could you sweep the butter back towards your right elbow a little more? Just a hair. And then you'd roll your head, the back of your head towards your left elbow. And now you have butter on the right side of your temple. Could you sweep that back? That's right. So now you're going to roll and you're going to sweep only if it's easy, only if it's easy, only if it's easy. Only if it's easy. Good. Good. And let that go. Let yourself sit back and up. And just what are you noticing in your neck? What are you noticing in your shoulders? What, what feels like a change for you in your chest? Let's do it one more time. And we're going to add a little different image. So cross your arms however you like over. Put your forehead on the back. Somebody, oh, Renee says soothing. Adiko says more open. Joe, more space. Good. Let's do a little tiny more. So put your forehead on the back of your arms or hands. And we're going to come back to this spreading butter. And you're going to, you're going to let your, the back of your head roll. And you're going to swipe the butter. And then you let the back of your head roll towards the other elbow and you swipe back towards that same elbow. So it's not a lot of room, but now I want you to include in your image that the breastbone slides with you. The breastbone slides with you. So your head rolls, the back of your head rolls towards the left elbow and then on your left, let's see, right? As you left it, the left temple slides back towards the left elbow, then the back of the head rolls towards the right, the right temple slides back towards the right elbow. And what happens if you include your breastbone in the image that it slides and glides with you, that the ribs underneath your armpit are available, that the space between the upper arm and the armpit is changing on one side and the other. That's it. Beautiful. Let it go. Bring yourself back up when you're ready. Mm -hmm. And come up to stand. Come up to stand when you're ready. And just feel for a moment in standing. Hey, what is this? What does that feel like in my neck and my shoulders, in my arms? What does it feel like in the chest? How is that different from what you checked into earlier? Is there a different quality of the curve in your neck? Is there something different about that curve in your neck? Did it affect something different in the curve of your low back? Maybe even change something in your knees. Okay, let's hear from a few people. When you're ready, you can put in the comments there what you're noticing. So you can, you can get a range of experiences. It's good to just take a moment with your own sensation. And then if you're up for it, Arit says it feels loose. Margo says more awareness. C said lovely. Tracy, neck feels so much better, more relaxed. Relief of tension in the jaw from Jan. Uh, Atlas, um, more adjust, was it? Less? Shoulder adjustment. Oh, interesting. Taffy said their neck curve was flatter. Some, oh, good. Somebody did feel a softened in the knees. I love that. Love those connections. 
Mm -hmm. Less creaky, Kathleen says, less creaky, greater fluidity. So there's many open chest, help the left shoulder, soften the curve, many different, widen the ribs, yes. Okay, so Nancy said, well, the neck seems, is still very stiff, but the curve seems less. Yeah, you know, so if you have a stiff neck, um, there might be other things that we would want to do to really soften this thoracic a little bit before you did something like this. So there's many other options of how to work with it. Uh, Jim said he felt a release of the sympathetic nerve. Debbie, longer legs. Front of the torso opened. Excellent. Good. Lots of neck, chest, arms. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, Eric says, could it be good for headaches? Yeah, it could be. And it could not be, I have to be honest, you know, it really has so much to do with um, how the quality of how somebody is able to engage in the movement, but also what is the cause of the headaches is, it will probably make a difference as well. So it just depends. It just depends. Almost anything can be good for headaches. It just, it's just has to do with the person has a lot more to do with the person and the quality of the explorations. Okay, so are you ready to try something else completely new? So we're gonna be taking that towel I put in the, uh, uh, for you. So you need your towel. You need to roll it up lengthwise. We're gonna make a towel roller. <clears throat> and it is important that it is a towel roller and not a foam roller. So we're definitely not going to use foam rollers. We're going to use a towel roller that you've rolled lengthwise instead of the narrow side. Then you're going to want to arrange yourself so that you could put your head on the ground towards the wall. <clears throat> and you will have your towel on, on the ground. It's actually going to be underneath your body in a moment. I do not have an adaptation for this in a bed. So for those of you who aren't able to get up and down from the floor, I hope you participated in the first two items. And uh, this one will not be easy to adapt to a soft surface. You're gonna need a firm surface. Anita Verdes, how would you feel if I put you on video? Would it be okay? You've got a really good setup. Okay, great. I'm going to see who else has got a good setup for people to see. If it bothers you, just let me know. I, there's no pressure from me. Uh, let's see if I can find a few other people here to add. We've got good setups. Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Let me just get a few people to put up here so you can, I can coach a little bit more specifically and you'll be able to see. So Adelaide, you're going to need to put your hands on the wall. I'll tell you what that means. Don't, don't lie on your roller yet, please. Don't lie on it yet. I'm going to have something very specific you're going to do with it. I'm going to have something very specific you're going to do with it. <clears throat> Just give me one more minute to see if I can find one more person here to balance it out. Big group, really big group. So it makes it a little, takes a little longer for me to navigate through. Um, I think. Ruth, oh, how about Mike Shreve? Mike Shreve, would you be okay if I put you on video? You're okay with that? Great, okay. Just looking for people that have a setup we can see. Beautiful, thank you so much. That, that'll be so helpful for people. And so you're going to actually, <clears throat> You want, you're going to have your head <clears throat> about an inch or two from the wall. So that's when you lay back, you want to feel that you have your head about an inch or two from the wall. Now, you also want to feel that if your head hangs back in space, that you could put an extra little piece of padding underneath your head, like a, a, uh, another towel or something else that you might have that's folded up because I don't want you to have a, an excessive curve in your neck. And I also don't want you to be spending your time flattening the neck. The flattening the neck is not a good idea. Okay. 
Now you're going to place the roller along the right side of your back. So from your right shoulder to the right side of your pelvis is where your roller is going to go. From the right shoulder to the right side of the pelvis. And then if your towel is long enough, your head actually won't be on the roller. If your towel is long enough, it can just hang out between your knees. It can hang between your knees. If you feel like you're cattywampus, that's my, one of my favorite words, because you got half of your body on a roller and half of it off, you should feel cattywampus. It's, 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 an unusual, it's an unusual stimulation, isn't it? It's an unusual stimulation. Yeah, but you don't want the roller to be so big that it's uncomfortable. So uh, Adelaide, I think your roller is too big. I would unroll that a little bit. So it, it, it's gonna feel like an imposition, but it shouldn't hurt. It shouldn't feel like you're constantly struggling to be on the roller, okay? Great. And just for a moment, as you get settled into this weirdness, just, just feel that, feel the oddness of it, to have one side of your body supported and one side of the body more or less lying on the ground. And your head is on the ground or on some separate padding. Now, please slowly bring each foot up to stand so the knees are oriented towards the ceiling and your feet are flat on the ground. And, and you know, take a little time to feel like, hey, I feel like my feet are stable. They're not about to slide away from me. I don't have to work at, I don't have to work at um, having my legs bent. Usually that means the feet are getting closer to being underneath the knee. The heel, at least, is starting to get closer to being underneath the knee. Now, you may have reasons for having your knees not quite as bent because you have some, some challenges in the knees. That's fine, too. Good. Now, slide your hands up onto your body, up through the middle of your chest, take your fingertips towards your mouth, over your face, over your forehead, touching your body if it's okay with you. So you can place your hands on the wall. You open the palms on the wall. So both hands are open on the wall. And that means the heel of the hands will be towards the ceiling and the fingertips will be towards the floor. Ah, yeah, there you go, good. Now the fingertips are towards the floor. That's it, that's it. Now, for some people, there's things going on, right? They got old wrist injuries or it's just so uncomfortable immediately. If it's really super uncomfortable, you can, can use fists and just use the back of your fist on the wall, back of your fist on the wall. Okay. So the hands are just there to be a little bit of a stabilizing factor. Please press through your left foot and feel how that can lighten the left side of your pelvis and then slowly lower, slowly lower the pelvis, let go of the press. And then press through the left foot and begin to raise the left side of the pelvis by standing on that left foot to be even with the right side of your pelvis and then lower back down. And let it come all the way to the ground completely before you start again. And then press through the foot when you're ready and you raise that left side of the pelvis and notice what happens in the low back and the belly button, how it changes where it points. Notice what happens in the ribs along the both sides of the body, how the ribs are turning. So maybe the floating ribs are turning, but maybe the mid ribs are even turning when you lift that side of the pelvis and you lower it. Maybe you even feel something shifting between the shoulder blades or in the breastbone. Okay, pause with that, pause with that. Leave yourself on the roller, slowly drag your hands down the middle of your body 
off to the side, let the hands rest. And if you like, let your legs go long and stretch them out. If you don't wanna keep them in the standing position, that's okay too. And just take a moment to feel your breath arising and falling. And to see if maybe the roller doesn't feel quite as weird as it did in the beginning. Doesn't feel quite as weird as it did in the beginning. Okay, so please bring your feet up to stand again. Bring your hands up through the middle to the wall above your head. And just press through that left hand on the wall and notice that you could lift the left shoulder blade a little bit from the ground and lower it. Just do that a couple of times. So you could feel like, oh, I could bring the left shoulder up to be more even with the right. Okay, so we're gonna start putting it together. Just pause with the shoulder resting on the ground now. Begin to press first with your left foot to raise the left side of the pelvis, then press the hand, raise the shoulder. Then lower the shoulder, then lower the hip. That's it. So it's kind of a two step up and a two step down. Press the foot, raise the left side of the pelvis. Press the hand, raise the left shoulder, lower the shoulder, lower the pelvis. There you go. So just see if you can connect that a few more times. And of course, this means that you're changing the way you lean on the roller, doesn't it? means you're changing something about the way the pressure on the roller is affecting the right side of your body. So you're really working with both sides of the body, but in different ways right now, in different ways, because the towel forms something that your body is starting to learn to shape around. The towel roller on something that your body is learning to shape around. Good. Are you breathing? Can you do this and breathe? Does your head want to roll it all to go with it? Let me just do one more. And then fold the hands back in towards your body. Slide them down your face. Slide them down your chest. Slide them down your belly. And let them fall off to the sides. Gradually let your legs go long. And with as little disturbance as possible, just barely roll yourself to the left so that you could reach behind you and take the towel out and move it, the roller clear away from your body so it's not touching you in any way. Allow yourself to be elongated, if okay, that way, and feel with your eyes closed, what happened? Did the shape of the floor change? Did your shape change? That was a very small amount of exploration. And there was some pretty significant change in your perception of yourself in relationship to that ground. Now softly, gently begin to roll yourself through a side up to sitting. Nothing hurried, how slow, how gentle, how easy could you do this? And then if you need to remake your towel roller, remake it and place it along the left side of your body. You just take your time. And if you can, you'll need to be a little closer to the wall, 
Clotilda. Your head is pretty far away from the wall. Yeah. So your head will be about an inch or two from the wall. That'll make it a good distance for you to get your hands up onto the wall. And you maybe lie for a moment with your legs long and you can feel for yourself how, how you are on the ground. You don't wanna be watching me right now, actually. You really wanna be trying to figure out for yourself what the movements are like. What do, how would I figure out what these are? That's, that's a essential part of a Feldenkrais approach. Not that someone models the movements for you, but that you kind of go, I don't know, I'm not sure. That's great that you're not sure. That's totally great that you're not sure. Brace, bring your feet to standing. You keep asking the questions, you'll get better at it. So you're, if you're new, you're new, right? If this is new to you, it's new to you. It's not about doing it right. Slide your hands up on your belly, slide your hands up through the breastbone, across your face, above the forehead. Open the palms so that the heels of the hands are pointed towards the ceiling and the fingertips are down towards the baseboard, towards the floor. There you go. Now begin to press through, your feet are in standing. Your feet are in standing, yep. Yeah. Now press through the right foot to lift the right side of the pelvis up to be level with the left and lower it. So you can feel on the roller, of course, the right side of your body is hanging way down compared to the roller, the left side, right? So you are gonna press through the foot and you lift the right side of the pelvis and then you lower it. And you press and you lower. Mm -hmm. Gently, easily. Good. Now, pause with the pelvis on the ground and press through that right sh hand on the wall and lift the right shoulder. And that's a, a funky little movement for lots of us. We're not quite sure how we would do that. But it's okay to try and still not be sure. It's okay to try, or could it be okay to try and not be sure? For some of us, it's not. And so that's part of what somatic education becomes about is making that okay. Because man, if we can't afford to, as Moshe Feldenkrais said, do it badly, then we'll never really get anywhere because we're always thinking we should be experts when we, we shouldn't. We should just be where we're at. It's better to be a novice every day Better to be a novice every day. Let's put them together. Now let's rest. Bring your hands down. I forget how, I forget that these, a lot of people are not. The hands down the front of the body. A lot of people are not used to having their hands on the wall. And legs long if you like. So when you come from other approaches where everything is demonstrated, this can be a hard transition into the Feldenkrais work, but I hope it'll, I hope it'll work for you. I know it can work for you. It's just, it's a hard, it's a hard moment to transition from being shown exactly what to do to discovering it within your own mind and body. Please bring your feet back up to standing, bring your hands back up through the middle of your body. You're stroking through the middle as if you were tracing the front of your spine. You're, you're reminding yourself, where is the center of myself? And then you put your hands on the wall. The palms are on the wall, the fingertips are facing down as the elbows are facing up towards the ceiling. And you begin to press through that right foot to raise the right side of the pelvis. Then you press through the left shoulder. You raise, I'm sorry, the right hand to raise the right shoulder. You lower the shoulder, you lower the pelvis. So you press through the right foot. You find the connection from the right foot to bring the pelvis up to be even with the left side. And then you press through and lift the right shoulder to be even with the right, the left side. You lower the right shoulder, you lower the right side of the pelvis. 
and you just go back and forth a few times. Lovely. Good. Very few movements. That's probably enough. So you can, when you're ready, you can bring your hands slowly back down. You can slide your legs long. You can roll a little bit to the right so that you can remove the roller from behind you. Just feel now, what is the shape of your body? What is the shape of the ground? How, is it, how has it changed yet again? So this is something we don't realize. Most of us don't realize that our bodies will change their shape very, very faithfully according to what we're in contact with and rapidly, rapidly. Hmm. So what does it mean if we never place our back against buried surfaces? What does it mean if we never place our feet against buried surfaces? What does that mean? If we stay always in the same shoes, always on hard floors, concrete, if we're never barefoot, if we're never on grass, if we're never on gravel, if we're never on uneven ground, what does it mean? It means we lose some of our adaptability. And as you're ready, please roll through your side up to sitting. Take your time. Think about What's the easiest possible way I could do that? What's the easiest possible way I could do that? And then slowly find a way to come up to standing that works for you. And in standing, just pause for a moment in standing. second let me get my mute working and in standing just feel for yourself now what's different is there something different in the way that your weight is on your feet maybe between left and right perhaps between the front and the back Maybe there's something different in the way that your arms are hanging. Perhaps there's something different in the shape of the curves of your low back. That in curve may not be such a strong in curve or in the neck. And then slowly walk around. Feel as you walk, is there any increased freedom and ease? Is there something about being able to look around a little bit more? Okay, walk around another full minute before we come back to um, taking comments and questions. So just walk around for another full minute, be with yourself so that you don't come back immediately to a screen. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay. And you can start to make your way back. So I'm going to take um, questions on camera. You can raise your virtual hand that usually is found by questions or comments. You can tell us about your experience. Um, you can usually find that virtual hand by uh, clicking on participants and at the bottom of it, there will be an option to raise hand that'll allow me to send you a note to unmute yourself. I see lots of people already posting really fabulous things, um, but let's see here who we have. Um, Pamela H. Let's start with Pamela H. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself, Pamela. Hi, Cynthia. Um, my, my raised hand was actually from when we first started. I just wanted clarification on the roller, if it was to fall between the spine and the shoulder blade or stay fully over toward the shoulder blade, shoulder or does blade, it make a difference? The back of the shoulder blade and the back of the pelvis, not on the spine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Bill. Bill Ferner, you want to unmute? Let's see, let me try again. Did you get a message that time? There it is. Uh, yes, the surprise for me was that my preference is strongly to walk contralateral. My left foot out, my right shoulder out. And when I got up after, uh, these movements, I had to almost force myself to write, to walk contralateral. My whole body wanted to go the other way than I do normally. <laughs> I'm not sure where that comes from. Right. And did you feel like you needed to force yourself to do that or could you have let it be for a while? Oh, I was comfortable walking that way. It's just, I Curious, noticed isn't that. It? Uh, so I said, oh, gee, can I walk the, you know, my quote, usual way. Yeah, not so easy. And my body said, well, if you must. <laughs> uh, Bill, do you have a background in this kind of work? Uh, yes, I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner. Yeah, yeah. So for people who are just listening to that, thank you, Bill. For people who are listening to that and thinking, well, why, why would you want to to do that right but we, we you just let it happen you let things happen and the the feeling of that bill experience tells him something in his system is reorganizing and saying hey maybe there's other ways maybe i don't have to do everything exactly the same way i've always chosen so you need this kind of stimulation within the system so it can make more spontaneous choices as opposed to someone telling bill to walk differently. This never works. I mean, if it, if it does, it's a short-term fix. It's not a long-term fix. It's, and in the, in the long-term, it may actually be more of a problem because we pick up other kinds of habits. Fiona. Hey, uh, hi. Um, I was wondering for the second exercise with the spreading the butter, um, are you supposed to keep your pelvis and your chest really stable and still when you're doing like the first version of that where you're moving that oh, spot? Absolutely not. You're supposed to let everything move. You're supposed to do, you're supposed to let yourself interpret the instruction in any way that works for you. So if you keep it stiff and you try to move it, that's about what you're going to get, right? And so you go, Hmm. And so this is a great question, Fiona, because it helps us understand how we work in somatic education. So we don't say, hey, you're going to need to activate this, 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 and this. We give you an idea. We let you start to figure out, well, what does that, what does that idea mean to you, right? And then we start to say, well, maybe there could be this aspect, but we never tell you exactly how to do it. It's more like a self-discovery. So then we're like, oh, well, does this have something to do? Would that free something up? Huh? Would that free something up? Huh? Would, would the breastbone going with it free something up? So that 
it might have been for some people that they had a beautiful organization that could very little be improved on right from the beginning, but probably not. You know, most of us can use some kind of an uh, upgrade, right, in our, in our understanding. So it just unfolds, the lessons unfold with these, these layering uh, of other options that some people might have gone, wow, that breastbone image, that's big, right? And somebody else went, oh my gosh, something under my armpits, that was it for me, that, that changed it. So it just keeps adding on them. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And do you come from a teaching background and maybe some other field? Oh, I have to ask you to unmute again. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. I teach yoga and I study fascia. Um, and one of my mentors who I do like a lot of fascia work with, she'll do exercises where we do try to isolate Mm -hmm. which is where that I think that came from for me where like when I was consciously moving my collarbone that really changed it and then I was like I wasn't sure if we were supposed to isolate earlier um, right we we use positions to isolate things so the position itself isolated some items that if you were doing this in free space right so the table isolates some items the crossing right. of the arms the tighter they are isolates some items um where your butt is on the chair or if you're lying on the ground that's actually the lesson is normally done on the ground but i wanted to give people many options and there's a lot more to that lesson to be honest that is like um 10 minutes of a 45 minute lesson and it's right. 10 minutes that i feel like everybody has access to without uh causing you know injury or problems yeah 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 thanks fiona that's great thank you i love that question Okay, um, Baby Kramer. Hi, good evening from Manila. Um, Hi from Manila. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, unilateral work, um, I like using it, like I, I work with clients. I do, I teach um, Stott Pilates and I use yin yoga, but I also use it in tandem with counseling. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what I found interesting was um, with the the butter spread the butter work was how it helped also to open up from the cranial you know the nasal passages through the cranium, and then you also begin to see you know how that one how the scapula moves and where if there's injury how that could help the client. What I was surprised with was with the towel roll thing. I actually um, felt a lot of compression in my uh, lumbar. Mm. And so getting up, especially on the right side, was I actually had a hard time getting up. I had to mm -hmm. use this to prop myself up. So, you know, that was quite interesting. And I don't have any injuries at the moment. So either the way, I don't know the way I had the towel. Also even, but when I had the towels, it actually did feel different already on the hips. One side felt much higher, like the, the second round when it was underneath the um, the left side, mm -hmm. no, the right side, sorry, we did the second round, the right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that felt way higher than when it had been my left hip that was above. So mm -hmm. I guess there's a possibility that has come out, which I'm not even aware of. And, you know, over time also, you know, so I'm, I'm getting older and my body's changing itself. So, yeah, yeah. if I were watch, watching you, I would be curious uh, when your feet were in standing in that, I would be curious about whether there was a quality of how your foot was in standing that allowed the natural length of your low back to release or if there was a quality in the way your foot was standing that that did not allow that so that might be one place I would go with in my exploration with you now if I saw you I might have a completely different idea but okay. uh, but right off the top of my head I would probably start with where and how the foot was standing also you know there's um the the their other piece, and I don't know if you, if any of us have a predisposition to a bit of, bit of a um, habit of sticking out the tail, we'll just call it that. So a, a bigger increase curve in our low back, if that is our disposition in the first place, then what can happen in that kind of an exploration is that when you lift the foot and the pelvis, you're not you're not connecting into the rib cage. 
So the, again, I think the quality of how you stand on the foot is huge. So if the foot presses in a particular way, it will connect up through the rib cage than if it presses in a different kind of way. So those are like variations of how I would play with it. Uh, if I was, you know, in a, in a live, in a class or with a private client where I could see everybody, I would, I would play with it quite a lot in different ways that way. Mm -hmm. Would also gluteal firing be, because you know, like now we've been in a lot of discussions about um, gluteal amnesia is actually even a term because I was quite concentrated in the foot. It was only after that I asked myself that. Yeah, I, I'm not, in, I'm not very I'm, interested in gluteal firing in this. Okay. I'm okay. really interested in the skeletal connections. So we're very big on the skeletal connections, which is a very different way for Pilates instructors to typically, or Pilates students to typically pay attention. And that's not a critique, that's just a difference. So like when we look at the lenses that we all teach and our work goes through, the shifting of the lens a little bit can open up a really different uh, experience. So we, our work, I would say, one of the ways that you can stand out is in the skeletal connections, the clarity of skeletal connections. And that can take some time. Again, not going to happen in you know, immediately. Yeah, thanks. Maria. Okay, now. Hi, Maria. Okay. Oh, it's difficult for me to um, uh, air because you are very fast and my English is not so good. Oh, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> but uh, in any case, it's a, a beautiful experience um, to come back to this method that, that I have made some time ago. Um, uh, probably uh, I, I'm customated to to make more slow, more slow, and to feel every side when you have pain, and um, and to explore the different way to move leg with arm and neck in uh, a rotation uh, from different side point of uh, rotation, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I made, uh, I have tried <laughs> to... <laughs> you tried to figure it out, yeah. Uh, I, I, I make with my imagination. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The method says this, Moshe, uh -huh. no? Imagine the movement <laughs> are you from a feldenkrais background maria you sorry are you from a feldenkrais background um only one year uh-huh i i'd like to make uh, all uh, the formation uh, the training all the training uh, but we have some problem with the the, the teacher Mm -hmm. uh, we um, uh, work uh, with Ned. We uh, Ned. Oh, the the, the some name I don't remember. Ned from uh, California. Ned Well, you uh, you know. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, yes, it's D E W E L L E. I think is the way it's spelled. Duel. Duel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, from um, Israel, uh, another one. Okay. That, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there, but I'm glad you participated. And actually, it it does raise a difference, a bit of a difference between Bones for Life and the Feldenkrais method. So, Ruthie did not uh, emphasize endless awareness, which the Feldenkrais method does, and she emphasized awareness, but not, not nearly these long processes. Her lessons, most of them only take 30 minutes, some of them as little as five. And, um, and she wanted it to be more accessible to a broader population than people who could really get excited about, you know, hanging out in that, that zone of uh, constantly sensing and sensing and then sensing some more. But that's not where 
most people come to us from. They come to us from something that's much more of an exercise modality. And she wanted a bridge between that and uh, her work as opposed to the big jump that a lot of times people are required to do for Feldenkrais. Now we could argue about the validity of that or not that, you know, I uh, just, just um, kind of giving a little bit of a background of how she sees it, how she saw it. Uh, Taffy. Taffy making me hungry for candy, Taffy. You there? No? Okay. I'm trying to scroll down here to see if there's any other questions or comments. It looks like I might have missed a few. Um, so a couple of people posted about examples. I did put four people up on the screen so you could see four different ways people were doing it. If you didn't see that, that's something to do with your view because it was, it was there for everybody. So you might uh, get a hold when we send out the replay, which will be later today. You might look on the replay for that. Um, and Judy, I, I love hearing that you had, were interested in how the, the energy flowed through the spine as a result of it. Good for you. Good, good. Um, and you can see I'm wearing my Summit swag today. So if any of you are interested in Summit swag, you will benefit a nonprofit called um, Adaptive Sports Partners of North Country, and they partner with people who have a disability to make uh, sports and outdoor adventures available to them, which is a beautiful thing. So all profits from the store go to them. And there's a lot of different options from t-shirts to a great Moshe quote. Uh, and I think Katrina's just now put the link to that in the chat for you. She'll put it in there a couple of more times. No, I'm definitely not a daughter of Ruthie. Uh, yeah, that would be very sweet, but no, I'm not. Uh, her daughter's name is, I say it, Iris. I think they say it differently in Israel. Um, <clears throat> and we will send the email. We will send the replay out to you later today by email. Uh, any other questions or comments where people want to come on as opposed to staying just in the chat? I'm happy to take a few more. You want to ask me questions, uh, not just about this class. I see you're hanging on. So I'm thinking that you might have. Uh, Cynthia, yeah. I, finally, I finally found the unmute. Um, the very last uh, instruction where we lifted our hip and our shoulder, um, I found my head wanted uh, very much to be along for the ride and it my nose tipped up towards the ceiling and I really arched my neck to uh, follow through. Um, the bones for life is new to me. Is that is was that a normal kind of extension of what we're trying for or was was I um, incorrect? Oh, you weren't incorrect because it's what happened for you. Right. Okay. I, I want to, I want to say that really clearly. You were not incorrect because that's what's happened for you. So that, that is a Feldenkrais teaching right there. That's not incorrect. You know that, and then you noticed what happened for you, which is incredible. So let me, let me just give a lot of congratulations for that. Is it normal? It's normal probably for a decent subset of the population. And if we were going to go on with the lesson, which we could have, um, I tried to break these up into small enough bite-sized chunks that there would be something for everybody, um, but we could have gone on and then that probably would have gotten, other options would have gotten clearer for you, Taffy. So we're, we're like interested in making options clearer, options available. So um, yeah, so I wouldn't worry about it. I think I would give yourself a big pat on the back for noticing it because that's that's probably the biggest yeah. piece of it right there. And then you're curious. The second biggest piece, right. you noticed it and you're curious about it. That's a great learning right there. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Casey. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, Hi. Um, this is Alan. Can you see me and hear me? Uh -huh, I can see you, Alan. 
Okay, so I'm pretty new to this, and um, I, I'm intrigued by the idea that by so I'm intrigued by how subtle this is, and like the different approach from from normal um, things I'm used to, which is more athletic. So the question I have, just to kind of play in with how this works, so I've gotten Rolf before, which is really painful and seems to be kind of in the, the model that I come from, which is working with connective tissue directly, um, for example. So could you get to some of the same places with this that you could can, for example, and I'm just picking Rolfing as an example of like very like um, physical and, and connective tissue oriented um, with this as you can with Rolfing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think the answer is yes, and there's probably limitations. So, you know, we, um, we definitely are looking at uh, our movement patterns to create slide and glide upon, uh, within the tissues, you know, to make that, to make differentiation available uh, Alan, so that you not only know where your joints are at, but you have a, a feeling of freedom and glide in the fascia, in, in the muscles and the tendons, and all of that has some supp suppleness, the, the amount that it's supposed to be, right? Not more than it's supposed to be, but the amount that it's supposed to be. Um, but so I think we can do a lot with it. I think we can do a lot with it. Uh, and particularly in our private work and in functional integration where it's hands-on, we're still using the same qualities of exploration. So we're not digging in and trying to isolate in that kind of way typically, um, but we are still freeing, freeing up movement, differentiating the parts of the self. And then we're also saying, hey, this is how they connect. So if you don't know how they connect, you can't really use a new differentiation. So like, you're like, oh, uh, you know, we don't want just a shoulder joint. We want a shoulder joint that knows about the clavicle, that knows about the shoulder blade, that knows about the humerus, that knows about the ribs, that knows about the foot that supports it from the other side. We want we want all of those connections. Um, however, I think it's not, it's not probably, I'm sure there are some situations in which a much more specific approach uh, and some of the newer rolfing techniques that don't maybe go into as much painfulness would be helpful. So I would never say one of these works completely replaces another work in the world. I think there's reasons that these works were developed with their particular lenses. And of course, we know now that um, we know a lot about more about what is happening when somebody is being rolfed than we used to. I mean, uh, Robert Schleip has spent the last 15 or 20 years doing research as a, as a rolfer and a Feldenkrais practitioner doing research has become quite the researcher. And we understand more that it's not really about breaking up adhesions or uh, doing what we thought we were doing in those kinds of situations that the science shows it's something different. So int it's interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Bettina. Bettina, Bettina, Bettina. Yeah, you can chat. That's fine. Oh, you, you want me to see your chat. So I'm interested in why the hands are on the wall and not mirror wise on the ground, like the feet. What do you think? Yeah, because um, two things. One, it's easier for most people to get their hands on the wall than to get their hands on the ground, okay? So that requires a lot more flexibility to get the hand on the ground. However, uh, it also includes um, the Ruthie's desire to bring the hands to the wall to train them for a more of a skeletal stack and put pressure through. So we use this over and over in the work. So you see how the clear skeletal stack is here so that you could use these for, to mimic the kind of strength you would need to get from crawling, starting to get more transmission of force through this up into here, all these 90 degree angles. 90 degree angles transmit force quite differently than where you've got the hand all the way back here on the ground. That's a really 
different transmission of force. It's not gonna be as much of a bony connection. It starts to access the joints a lot more as opposed to in the opening of the joints as opposed to the bony connections. Uh, also, um, that goes with the fact that we use these hands of the wall to send pressure down through the spine. So those of you who were able to come to last year's summit in my pre-summit one, we use the hands on the wall to send pressure up and down through the spine, for example. So there's a lot of different variations in how we use the hands on the wall to um, create axial pressure. So that's one of the things we're really interested in is how does force travel through the skeleton? Many works, explore how do you get yourself to make different positions and this work is really is how do you interpret pressure when it travels through you as opposed to how do you make a different position to create pressure how do you how do you, how did your nervous system how does your nervous system interpret how pressure travels through you which is key to bone and joint health. Um, Anita. Sorry, my, my iPad was not letting me uh, unmute there. Um, yeah, and I just was following up. Can you hear me now? I can. Yeah, I was just uh, following on from, from Alan's question. Um, I'm a, a musician, so um, and I've been uh, going to Feldenkrais Quest classes for a number of years. And previously I was going to yoga. Obviously, we, you know, we, we, we need a lot of physio from time to time. And um, I have gone for one-to-one -one, uh, uh, integration classes with my Feldenkrais teacher. And it, it, it always struck me that after the, the sessions, it was better than any massage I ever had. Because I've, I've had massages and it's usually just crisis massage, you know, when I'm in a bad way. But the feeling I have after an integration session of, of lightness and space and relief with, without any pressure or heavy work was, was so much more effective. So for me now, after my years of exploration, it's really about, it's not about going in, as you say, and, and, and releasing adhesions, but looking for where you're holding and how you can, you can find that release and, and the relationships of the, you know, of, of the bones to each other and, you know, analyzing your, slightly misaligned patterns but that finding of release from inside from within you but and not from outside um has been the key for me well i appreciate hearing that a lot um you know my own personal experience with um uh the feldenkrais private sessions is is that is very similar anita i i like massage, but I like it because of the quality of um, skin to skin connection, I think, and the highly, a very specific kind of nurturing. But I have always found for myself that if I want something with some lasting power, it is Feldenkrais functional integration. And um, I, I don't know, it's really hard to describe, you know, how that's so different, but it's, it is for me. I'm not saying it is for everybody else, but it is for me quite quite different too. So yeah, thank you for sharing that, Anita. Okay, looks like we're coming towards the end. So there will be another pop-up session. Um, I can't remember when it's scheduled, but it's scheduled for next week. <laughs> You'll get it by the email again, for sure. And um, and if you have any uh, needs, you can uh, write support at futurelifenow.com, support at futurelifenow.com. And, um, and then of course, you know, we'll be getting ready for the uh, day one of the summit will be uh, 24 hours around the clock around the world awareness through movement lessons so you'll have the opportunity to tune in virtually any hour of the day and do a lesson in the Feldenkrais approach and then those lessons will remain available throughout the summit so you don't have to think you have to do 24 hours of movement you will probably still won't get to all of them but you um, you know you can get to some of them for sure and um, I think that might be it
I uh, think that might be it. Yeah. Okay. Listen, thank you so much for coming to join me. I really, really appreciate it. I love sharing information about the work. So thanks for hanging in there, this diehard group. Good for you. And uh, I'll see you all, I hope, at the next pop-up. Bye-bye.